In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Gazebo, a 3D physics-based robotics simulator that has powerful integrations with ROS. To start up Gazebo, we need to open up a terminal, source our installation setup script, and run the command ROS launch gazebo ROS empty world.launch. And here's the Gazebo interface. In the center, we have a 3D viewport into our simulated world. You can use your mouse buttons to drag the world around and rotate it. On the left, we have three tabs. In the World tab, we'll see a list of objects that are currently in our world, and selecting any of the objects will bring up a property panel for that object, where we can adjust anything about the object that might affect our simulation. In the Insert tab, we'll find a list of different models from different sources that we can add into our world simply by dragging them in. This tab lets you add new objects to your world at any point during the simulation. Along the top of the 3D viewport, we have a toolbar that contains a lot of useful tools for interacting with our simulated world. The first group of buttons lets us control the behavior of our mouse. We can either be controlling the position and orientation of our camera, or moving, rotating, and scaling objects in our simulated world. We have shortcut buttons for adding in new objects with primitive shapes or new lights into our scene. And we have a button that will let us line up our camera with different planes or axes in the world. On the other side of our toolbar, we have a screenshot button, a plot button, and a record video button. These are useful for recording behavior that we see in our simulation. Finally, along the bottom, we have our time control toolbar. Our simulation can be paused and restarted or stepped through in fixed increments. This toolbar will also tell us how much simulation time has passed, how much real time has passed, and what the real time factor is, or how closely our simulation is keeping up in real time. The real time factor will be impacted by things like how powerful your machine is and how complicated your simulated world and robot are. The content of our simulation is governed by two files, a world file and a URDF file. The world file specifies our environment. It controls the atmosphere, physics, and objects present in our simulation. The URDF file describes the structure of our robot. This includes what sensors and actuators the robot has. Both of these files are XML files with a lot of documentation on what tags you can use and how to structure them. And the URDF file is not specific to Gazebo. Most parts of ROS will reference content from the URDF file when they need to use information regarding the physical structure of your robot. There's one more thing we need to cover about using Gazebo with ROS, and that's how ROS handles simulated time. Many nodes will need to make calculations that keep track of how much time has passed. Because our simulator almost never runs at exactly real time, some of these calculations can't simply rely on the clock provided by our operating system. The ROS client libraries provide their own utilities for getting the current time, and under the hood, they can reference the simulation time provided by the ROS system. There are two graph resources that help us use simulation time. The first is a global parameter named useSimTime. This is a Boolean ROS parameter that the ROS time utilities will check to determine if they should be using simulation time or the operating system time. The second graph resource is a topic called clock. Any simulator that wants to provide a time reference for ROS will publish that time reference via the clock topic. So whenever use sim time is set to true, all of the ROS time utilities will subscribe to the clock topic and wait for reference messages to come across it to control what time they report to their nodes. So if you're ever testing a time-dependent algorithm in a gazebo simulation, consider using the simulation time. So the time that your algorithm is perceiving lines up with the physics in the simulator. That's it for this video. Each RoboJackets team has their own URDF file for their robot, and a set of world files that describe their competition environments. You'll learn more about how those are set up as you get more involved with the team. But now you know the basics of how to interact with the Gazebo Simulator.